what's going on everybody how is everybody doing before we get started here uh i see my sound is working that's good uh i'm going to turn on the music i'm going to connect the browser as i usually do because that just seems to be the case whenever i hit launch so let me do that real quick in the meantime and while i'm uh, doing this stuff let me know if you guys can see me if you can hear me uh, that would help me a lot. That way, when I look back at the chat in a second here, uh, I know we'll be all back to how we're supposed to go. All right, we go. should have music playing. Uh, let's get that back on the screen now. Properties. Change it to whatever. Change it back. All right, all right, all right. The last thing we need is the browser window. Let's go ahead and fix that. We don't want this one. We want this one. Yes. All right. What's going on, everybody? It's been uh, a couple weeks. Uh, if I start coughing before I mute like this, I apologize for uh, for your ear holes. But it might happen, especially if I'm talking for a while. <clears throat> I uh, turns out I had a cold for a couple weeks, and I went to see somebody, and they told me to man up and just uh, go through it. And after another week of the cold, I went to see another somebody uh, and they told me I have uh, bronchitis. So <laughs> I've been on all kinds of bronchitis related things. Um, yeah, so that's why I've missed the past two weeks. So my apologies. I'm uh, now officially two weeks behind in my projects and printer reviews. And uh, I probably have some apologies to send to people that I said that I'd have stuff out by now. But this is real life. Anyway, today we're going to work on this thing a little bit, uh, which I'm really excited for. I'm probably going to take a little break from it. Hopefully we get the electronics at least mostly in uh, or at least uh, closer to operation because as soon as the weather starts breaking, uh, I want to be outside. And then once, uh, I guess actually before schools are closed, although I don't have a great place to kind of take it to before schools are closed. Uh, but I guess there aren't too many after school activities in fields right now, so maybe it's okay. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to do some research. Um, but yeah, let me, uh, let's go through the chat. Let's see who's been in here. I saw, <laughs> I saw there were people in here from before, cause I had this live schedule two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, it all went away. Oh no. My early people went away. I can't see anymore. 30 Pathfinder became, uh, a member. Thank you, sir. Um, I saw your messages earlier. I just haven't had time to fully reply to all of them. Uh, but yeah, I saw some people were in here earlier. I guess those messages go away after you go live. That's kind of that's kind of a bummer. Uh, but I see Truggy's in here. Hey, Truggy. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, what's going on? Morning from, morning from uh, Western Australia. Hey, put another shrimp on the... Okay, no one wants to hear that. Solo, what's up? Mizumi's going to be late, but you know, she'll be back. It's all good. Uh, Tiger Flyer, what's up, man? Uh, I don't know if you noticed... Uh, Nero started doing uh, his uh, Anet A8 build. So I am behind by that by how many months? Four, three, three, four months behind on that build. I would love to do it. I can't wait to do it. Uh, just just so you know, considering I bought it from you. Uh, Jack Black, what's going on, man? Uh, Taijin, what's happening? Uh, oh, hold on, everybody. I, for some reason, my YouTube is... Like it came back up on my screen. Sorry. Um, JP. Yeah, there is going to be a stream. How you feeling? <coughs> I'm uh, feeling significantly better than I was because uh, I couldn't I couldn't even talk for two minutes without coughing my lungs out. So I uh, wonder if you've seen the uh, Make DEA project. I have not. I have no idea what that is, uh, but please fill me in. I'd like to know. Oh, Make C. Make C project. No. Uh, is that the, is that a tool head board? No, no, basically no. Uh, Chili Willie's, <laughs> Chili Willie's Reef. Nice. Chili Will's Reef? Chili Will's Reef. Nice. Sorry, man. I haven't seen you here before. What's going on? Sound great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Dennis Bradford, what's up? What's up? Loud and clear. Thank you. Audio's fine. Video's fine. Perfect. Thank you very much. Overexposed. I'm not exposed. Did I leave my zipper? No, my zipper's good. 
This is Zach Oaks. What's up? What's up? What's up? Got some Jeeps. Doing some Jeeping. Nice. Oh, cool. I was seeing if that was a CJ7 in the front or not. Um, hey, Philip. What's up? What's up? All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. A um, couple things before we get started. In the top of the chat, as per usual, uh, thanks to 3D Max, right there, you can win a spool of uh, 3D Max PLA Plus. Uh, and if you click that link, it'll take you to a screen like this where you answer a question right around here. And there's already three people in there. And uh, towards the end of the stream, in around two hours, I will call for a winner. Hopefully you're here. You have to be present and you have to be in the United States and you have to answer the question. Um, and then you can win yourself a spool. I'll forward that information over uh, to 3D Max and, uh, and we'll be golden and I can give that away. The only thing is you can't choose carbon fiber PLA. Uh, just regular PLA plus. There's a ton to choose from. Um, and yeah, and it has to be in stock. That's really it. Outside of that, uh, guys, please check out shop.3dprintsos. I actually launched another shirt today. Um, I, you know, I'm a simpleton, but I love these things. I love taking them out of the box every time we get a machine. And I'm kind of disappointed every time I unbox a machine, there isn't one. Um, so yeah, do you even, do you even 3D print if you, uh, if you don't have one of these, you know? So yeah, another cool shirt. Uh, you can get it in a dark navy uh, or a whitish uh, color. Uh, which is kind of like a heather. It's not pure white. Like it has like a texture to it. Uh, pretty cool. The, you know, the prices are crazy low in the store. Uh, I'm really happy about it. So yeah, if you guys want to support me in some way, shape or form, get yourself some merch here uh, at my shop. Uh, I have lots of different shirts, uh, a bunch of different uh, themes and styles. Uh, got some hoodies. Got this new zip up with uh, the logo on the back as well. I'll probably get that for events and stuff. Um, some other things like uh, work mats. Um, I'm using one right now uh, for just my keyboard and whatnot. I, I have this cutting mat, which I use as my main workout, but this would be perfect if I didn't have that. It's nice and soft. Uh, it's washable, all those things. And I have it in a bunch of different colors, blue, red, we got full color. And then the one that I have here is like the dark, uh, the dark set. Uh, I'm also taking some sips. Uh, out of my uh, hot ends mug, which is a two tone mug. We've got all the coolest hot ends and some you might be familiar with that maybe aren't so cool anymore, but hey, we still love them. <laughs> Cheers, good mug. I love that I can microwave the crap out of it and not have it burn my hands off. Uh, yeah, and you can look that cool. So yeah, that's shop at, uh, <coughs> excuse me, 3dprintsos.com. We went over the rolls, what else? Um, yeah, we got the uh, we got the video queued up uh, to continue on with the airplane build. Yeah, how's everybody doing? That's uh, that's everything I had to say. Now we just hang out. Uh, I think my chat doesn't work. Let me. Uh, yep. Cobble Nugget, what's up? He's alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it does work. It's okay. Um, yeah, I was just really under the weather, uh, but uh, I'm feeling much much better now. So happy about that. Uh, okay, let me catch up with the chat. So I, I just had, my chat wasn't working for some reason and then it just uploaded like a hundred messages. Uh, I did not see that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He started, uh, which, you know, it's super cool. Uh, at least I get to watch it. And uh, and he got pretty far actually on the first day. Uh, and I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, really like your video on the Creality K1C, so got one. Thanks for the great info. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mine's right here. This is the K1C. My K1 is down on the bottom there. I actually have a problem with it, uh, but I can't get help until Creality's back from their um, uh, spring festival break. I'm not going to hassle them for it, obviously, because, you know, they everyone everyone should get their holiday break on, you know? Make C. Uh, yeah, 3D printed electrical motors. Oh, no, that sounds cool. I want to know about that. Hey, Gryfang, what's up? What's up? Put in RC planes. Oh, that's even cooler. Uh, finally caught alive when it's actually live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice nice to see you here. He is alive. Hey, Papa. Papa's here. Looks like he has no vitamin D in his body. <laughs> is it really blown out? It looks pretty good on mine. I do have a cinema display, so I, I can't... Uh, it's color, co color corrected. It might be blown out. I can't tell. Hey, Jeff. Hey, never say you're sorry, man. You're li you're the MVP even if you're not here, dude. Caleb, Caleb, what's up? What's up? 
Good night, gotta go. Well, that was fast. See ya, man. Thanks for popping in here. And have a great night. Just got into 3D printing hobby. I've been watching all your videos. Great help. Thanks so much. That's that's awesome. I, I appreciate that. I'm glad I'm glad it's it's useful to some degree. Hey Jeff, you see what I mean? Already with the memberships? Come on. Appreciate you, man. And welcome to those five members. Please take a second to thank Jeff for his contributions to these live streams and just the constant support is just amazing. Jeff, seriously, man, you know, because you keep doing these things and your generosity, um, I, I, you know, I can continue to keep doing this and I don't feel so bad when I miss a few because I'm sick, you know? So thank you. Hey, Jesper, what's up, what's up? Um, 3D Prince OS, so a week ago, uh, the t-shirts were finally released by Customs. Oh man, that took a while. Uh, I'm glad you got them. Uh, yeah, yeah, awesome. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. I'm glad you got them. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I agree with the good people here. Jeff, you the man. And not to mention, he has probably one of the coolest printer collections and printer builds just in general. Um, might not have an outlet like some people do to show them off everywhere, but at least in my Discord, <coughs> you got some of the coolest builds, man. Pocketbook Harding. <laughs> Ooh, six Revos and two Galileo 2s. Nice. That's that's boss level stuff right there. You certainly sorted out my Kilobeck one. Nice. I've actually been, uh, I was just talking about this with a buddy of mine. I, uh, I have five Aquilas uh, sitting around. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, it's very likely that, let's be real, I'm never going to use them. Uh, donating them is going to be a problem. They're all used. Uh, they're all going to require some maintenance. Uh, I'm trying to think of something to do with them. The problem with doing some project that I invent or do myself is I don't have much time for this in general and doing all sorts of printer reviews and big projects like all this is uh, very difficult to do at the same time. And uh, I'm already so behind. So I, I don't want to make any promises, but I have been collecting some for a few things that I have in mind. Um, maybe something, maybe a filament recycle thing. I know that's not that's not really anything new. There's a bunch of those, but it's showing you how to take your Aquila and do it. Since according to my channel and analytics, a lot of users have Aquilas, or maybe you're you have new machines now and the Aquila's collecting dust, whatever it might be. There's definitely ways to make your Aquila still useful uh, in its afterlife if that's a thing. So, uh, if I'd ever stop, uh, thought about slapping a Nomi on your K1 Max, I have. Um, I actually have one uh, for, I, I bought one uh, for my K1 Max uh, right over here and never got around to it because my K1 Max is, is doing this and uh, I wanted it to do it stock so that after this amount of, this ridiculous amount of plastic is pushed through that machine, I can evaluate how it did and, and what the machine looks like afterwards. So if things need to be replaced and redone, then yeah, then I'll, I'll, I'll mod it. Um, I was also thinking about putting it on the K1 and modifying the K1 with a bunch of things, but then the K1C came out. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I have one. I have a Nomi in my uh, Voron Trident, which I really love. Nomi 2, by the way, the Nomi 2. Way better than Nomi 1, in my opinion. So yeah, I have all these ideas and plans, but what actually makes it to the channel, what actually makes it on my free time is unfortunately significantly less than that. Uh, but you know, that's life. <laughs> my wife already thinks I spend too much on 3D printing stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's a never ending thing. Everyday printing bongs all day and night, nice. I've actually seen some, I actually went somewhere uh, where they had shelving of these custom, just crazy custom pieces that you just put together to make you know bongs and pipes and whatnot i thought it was so neat at the time i don't know how that would actually work with all the water and the actual you know build up on the inside with with all you know with all the maybe they're meant to be somewhat disposable but i don't know it seems super customizable and super cool and i dig it i just came for a glass of mail with <laughs> Chad, well, you know what? If you're gonna have some horse milk on this channel, you better have it out of a, out of a 3D print SOS mug that you get yourself on shop.3dprintsos.com, my boy. So go ahead, go ahead and get your glass of milk, baby. <laughs> 
It's like, I'm already getting Mac this week, ordered Nomi already, can't wait to see a video on it. Nice. It's very easy to set up, actually. Well, there is no setup. You, you turn it on. Well, you give it power, okay? So you do have to do that, but it's easy because it's just two wires. And then you, you know, the screen turns on and it's like, hey, go on this IP address. Uh, you go on, you go on there and you give it the IP address of, uh, of the Clipper installation. So you, it has to be rooted. Your K1 has to be rooted. But once you give it that IP address, it just works. There's nothing else. <laughs> she's single. Nice. Hey, Fabrizio. What's up? What's up? A while ago, I was asking you about a keyboard you designed 668, and I finally got around to building it. It's been a gr it's been great so far, but Amazon's taking forever with the teensy. First of all, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's one up there, I think. Uh, my daughter is using my other keyboard out of the blue. She has decided to start typing up a storm. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Teensies uh, have gotten rare. And there's a bunch of new boards that you could use. If you don't want to wait long for a Teensy, if you go into the remixes of it on Thingiverse, a bunch of people have used other boards. There's USB-C boards, and they've remixed that piece, just the left piece of the board. Um, so yeah, if you're stuck waiting on the old school Teensy, because you're going to be limited by the plugs nowadays, right? Like, it's been many years now. Um, but yeah, yeah, you can always do that. And they're really inexpensive, some of the new ones. So it's just, just something to consider. But yeah, man, that's a, that's a really fun build. I always had a lot of fun building keyboards. I haven't done it in ages now. Uh, I built one for work, like an actual real uh, spend some dough uh, keyboard. And then that, that was kind of it, really. Um, yeah, I might, I might do that at some point. Maybe like a carbon fiber one would be cool. <laughs> 20 bucks a pop for a $2 investment. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's a great turnaround right there. <laughs> she maybe she doesn't call that. <laughs> nice. Shameless plug. Heck, heck yeah, man. Every time. I got it. I got it. I, I'm really proud of it. Greetings from Argentina. Nice. Welcome. Welcome. And yeah, definitely greetings. Your avatar scares the crap out of me, sir. Or ma'am. <laughs> Bragnar Lodbrock. That was my nickname in high school. My Nomi 2 is dead on arrival. Uh, I tried to power it up today and it's busted. Oh, that's, that's a bummer. I had a, a thing where I, by accident or something, I, I broke the antenna mount, like the actual antenna mount on the Nomi 2 broke. I, I messaged them, they sent me a, a replacement, which was very nice. But yeah, you might have some trouble right now if you're trying to get it from them because they're on holiday. Uh, did you see the Mika Steve live stream? No. Uh, Steve live stream? MK4. I'm guessing you're saying MK4 Steve live stream. In that case, no. I, I pop in and out, but I haven't really had much time to jump into a long-term uh, stream. Uh, I watched Brian's. Because um, he's building a war on uh, V0.2. So uh, I kind of naturally naturally gravitated towards, towards that stream because I love him. Uh, it's Brian from Ballistic Tech. Hey, Nigel. Uh, thank you. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> See, I got a little cough still, but thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Ferdo, that's right. That's right. All right. Now that we've chatted away for 20 minutes. Um, so I got my radio here. Uh, and I believe I made... I ah, printed these TPU covers and they're a little bit too tight. I'm going to take off my lanyard for now because I won't need it. Uh, from what I remember, drink your horse milk. That's right. Uh, I think I ended up making another one. No, I made one for Sim. All right, I'll have to make one later. Uh, and what I mean by that is another profile on here. No, 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 no. Return, return. Um, yeah, because basically what happens is on planes, because this isn't using a... Well, it has an electronic speed controller, but it, it doesn't use a, um, what's it called? A control board itself, like a flight controller. Uh, it doesn't have like arming and whatnot. So as soon as you give it any kind of power on this axis, it just goes. So what I got to do is in the controller here, I got to set up a rule uh, so that unless this toggle switch is up all the way, this does nothing. And that way we won't like cut our fingers off. Uh, I used to have that on the other plane build that I did uh, where I was trying to learn how to fly, but uh, I since then no longer have that radio and I went for a much smaller one. 
a uh, little jumper tea light with some CNC gimbals. Um, so I, I do miss that giant screen on the Radio Master, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so that's something I have to be very careful about. I won't be putting on a prop on this thing until the very end because of that specifically, because as soon as you touch it, she's all, you know, she'll go. I'll make sure to post a picture of the keyboard once I finish it. Uh, great mod, by the way. Oh, model, by the way. The only thing that changed, I added some holes for the heat set inserts. Nice. Oh, uh, yeah, heat. So that was before I even... I, well, I, heat, heat set inserts were a thing back then, I'm sure. But it was definitely way before I ever put in a single heat set insert. Heat, heat set insert. Obviously, if I design one now, uh, I would heat, heat set insert everything. So, yeah, definitely, definitely a good mod. Definitely a good mod. GPS, no. No GPS, just going raw. When this thing goes down, it's exploding, baby. <laughs> I don't know why I always start out uh, at the end on my phone tablet, but when I always end up switching over to the normal computer, just to glenn for punishment. <laughs> hey, Mr. Ed, what's up, what's up? All right, so a few things. Uh, these rods that I had from my other plane, all right, let me uh, switch to this. Uh, these rods that I was using for my servos are nowhere near long enough. So that's a problem. I couldn't order any in time, so I went to the hardware store and I picked up these bad boys. These are long enough, but they are 1.6 millimeters. And this admittedly might be too thick for the application. Uh, I don't think the servos will have pro a problem, especially if I maybe lubricate it inside. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna try to put them in. If not, I could always do them later at another time, but I would definitely like to have the electronics situated. So my plan is to show you guys all the electronics, how they work, just so that if somebody's thinking of building one or whatever, you know, uh, you have that. And then what I wanna do is I wanna assemble the rest of it. So uh, the elevators here, uh, we're gonna use, <coughs> uh, we're gonna use this stuff to put that on there. The uh, what's this thing called? Not the rudder. Uh, the tail section uh, we're going to install on there just so that everything is pretty much ready to go. Uh, I think from the last time we were working on it, uh, I had a black front area over here. Uh, this this uh, little piece. I since then reprinted it uh, in a white and I put it together with the pen spring. So that's kind of where we left off, but now, now it's white and it is a different plastic because I ran out of this white. And I kind of wanted to point out, um, if you can see the texture right there, so you can kind of see it right there glistening in the, in the light, the texture for print, from printers of yesteryear, because this was printed on a bunch of different printers, is such a far cry from any modern machine. Now look at the difference. There is no texture. There's basically no layer lines. And it's kind of funny that just the difference that, what, a few years? Well, no, I guess it's been like about maybe a year and a half, two years since printing all these parts, right? Like it's been a while. Uh, here, let me show you. Yeah, see, like it's kind of funny that out of the box printers have improved so, so, so much. It's kind of funny, but I still don't think it looks bad. Uh, it actually doesn't matter how it looks down here, right? As long as this thing flies. Um, but yeah, I, I found a big, big old rubber band. It looks like it's going to rip at any minute now. So I'll have to find some other way to mount the wing. Uh, if anyone has a suggestion for big rubber bands like that, that would be nice. Uh, but yeah, I'll take the wing off and we will get going. Oh yeah, that's why I have the wing on. I also printed these, uh, these little pins because I didn't print them before apparently. So pins. Uh, pins were printed to hold the wing on and then that little cover the electronics cover uh, So the wings can chill out here for a bit uh, We'll take this cover off and set it aside uh, Let's set this thing to the side as well uh, We have landing gear. We have a bunch of stuff to still kind of do so hopefully we'll get to as much of that as possible All right, let's Let's get this out. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also I have a few other things so uh, it's going to be using these 3S 3000 milliamp batteries. Uh, they're pretty thin. Uh, I use them in the other plane. I do have two of them, luckily, so that's nice. Uh, let me see what this one is at. 
12.5, so 4.16. Okay, perfect on these cells. So as far as the electronics go, I actually have two sets uh, because I kept all the electronics from the other plane build before I destroyed it. And the reason why I bring up the fact that I have two is because I kind of have to choose which direction I go uh, with that. Also, what? All oh, right, okay. Yeah, here's uh, some landing gear here. Let me show you this. So the landing gear is, uh, this is for the rear. Uh, it has a TPU wheel and the center, just a piece of filament going through it with some uh, CA glue on the edges. It actually comes out really nice and spins really neatly. And it has a tiny bit of flex to it because of its shape. It's actually a, a nice design. So we'll have to throw that on at some point. Uh, let me get the rest. So I have a couple extensions here that we might need. I'm not sure if we will or won't, but I'll throw them over here. We have the motor. Yeah, like I said, I'm not taking any of the prop stuff out at all uh, because that could get dangerous quick. I have a two millimeter tap uh, because I wanna tap through these holes and I don't have a, my drill down here. So yes, I'm gonna use a tap, which I know is crazy. Let me just do that real quick so that I don't uh, forget to do it a little later. Hopefully this even works. Otherwise, I'll have to go get my drill. I just don't wanna, don't wanna go to the garage. Let's see. This might not work actually. Yeah, I might need an actual drill bit. Uh, is that better passed out drunk behind it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. There's the, uh, there's the progress of this project. Uh, this is actually one of the first days in a long, long time uh, that the, the, the K1 Max is not printing. I'm trying to get the camera to like zoom in here. Hey, camera. All right, it's this finger. Come on. What's going on here? Camera. What? Is it this? Nope. It's this. What? Camera. I thought you were all cool in AI. What's going on here? No? You don't want to do this today? We're not playing these games? Will you park? Yes, you'll park. Will you move? Okay. Now zoom. Okay, well, now that that's all weird and awkward, I guess I have that turned off somewhere. Uh, all right. It is what it is. I don't know where that it went. Image. There's supposed to be uh, more maybe. Gesture control. Yeah, zoom's on. Let's see. I'll turn it off and then on again. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um. Ah. Oh. Plot twist. <laughs> that doesn't work. Okay. Well, you know, it's a one to one size. But yeah, this is the front half, that's the back half. I have a couple pieces left to print. I'm out of blue. I have one more spool, but I'm gonna be out of blue because I'm saving that one for the for the shirt where the neck is. It's actually an issue. Uh, if you guys go to the channel and go to the uh, shorts, I made a short about it. Um, it was a little bit of an oversight on the way it was sliced. Uh, the neck has like a piece where the head pops in, but the neck itself, the neck area itself doesn't have that. So it has to be re recut and, and reprinted, unfortunately. So yeah, there's still a couple days worth of printing at least at a minimum, plus some editing and some reprinting. And I don't have enough filament. Uh, and I'm gonna wait uh, for them to be back uh, to, uh, to get more. So it, it is a little bit in my way, unfortunately, but at least it gives me a break from that machine not, not printing literally weeks and weeks without stopping back to back to back. So, all right, this is not gonna work, I don't think. So yeah, no drill was a bad idea. Let me see just for for giggle's sake, if I can do it just by hand with uh, with a drill bit. 
But this PLA is tough. Come on. All right, let's see. But yeah, it's kind of a, a crazy project, uh, just in general. I, uh, the, whoever comes in here and sees it are all like, what in the world is even going on? And I sometimes take meetings from, from down here. And uh, I'm not gonna say it's embarrassing, because it's not, but like people don't know what to think of it. They're like, what are you doing? Uh, printing yourself <laughs> uh, you know it's got to be just a bit jarring for people that aren't into this kind of thing and that's okay good old hodo good old hodo with just the regular regular drill bit here of course of course that works and I just spent what, five minutes walking around? Okay, I just need a slightly larger drill bit now. Not drill bit. A uh, slightly larger bit in here. Let me do it to this one while I'm at it. What can't our Hodo do? That's a trick question. All right, let's get a slightly larger one <coughs> and do that. There we go. I guarantee you this will work now. Oh yeah, see, who needs a drill when you have a Hodo? Voila, okay, that's in. That works. We are golden with that. On to the next step. All right. Um, <coughs> let me catch up here. By the way, like I said, if, I, if I'm coughing before I can reach the mute, I'm sorry, guys uh, and gals. I used to love your TV show when I was a wee boy, Mr. Ed. Chad, I don't know what you're on, man. <laughs> but it's good stuff. If you crash, don't start eating people right away. <laughs> Give it a few days before you start gnawing your fellow humans. Look at yard flags at low homes. Oh, yeah. Yard flags would be interesting. I wonder how big that is. Tainted meat. Nice. <laughs> oh, I just got to the, is that Fredder, uh, Fredder passed out behind you? Yep, 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 it was. Before he destroyed it, uh, that doesn't bode well for the new plane at all. I've seen you fly. <laughs> I'll be leading that. Yep, 100%. Like I said, if I do manage to land it, okay, I'm going to print... Um, uh, what are the the floating the flotation devices called? I'm gonna make it a seaplane because I have a place to fly next to uh, a large pond, and that would be super fun <laughs> and way more dangerous. Oh Lord! Now I've seen PLA's fetters fetters PLA fetters butt. Yeah, it's um. It has, a, it has a pretty good sag to it. Apparently, my pants were, were sagging in the back there. Uh, I remember when they first scanned me, and she was, like, turning me around on the app to show me. I was just like, what happened back, back there? Look, look, I had a diaper on. Mar <laughs> Martin, <laughs> there should be a chalk line around the dead body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that's funny. Get wrecked. I'll be building the the ducktail seaplane and foam. Nice, that 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 that'll be fun. Dress like a Corvette owner. Hey man, if I could, I would. Did I get myself a pin vice? I did. I did get myself a really nice pin vice over here to the side. It's always, it's always here, ready, ready to be put to work. Just waiting on the side. I put it on the side because if my kid's over here, 
and whatnot <laughs> and like running around i don't want this like sharp you know thing right there so i moved it to the side uh can someone put a link in the chat uh i can i can resend it i think Uh, let's see. There you go. For those that want to jump in here. Well, there's 14 people in, so really good chances. Really good chances. Uh, an exact handle will work uh, for the smallest. Oh, okay. Mecha Godzilla and King Kong, 200%. Wow, six weeks of printing. They turned out awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a long time. One of the problems is uh, during the whole thing, the motherboard died on the K1 because of a fan that's on the bottom. It actually shorted something. I'll explain it in the video uh, and help people avoid that issue. That's all fixed on the newer ones. Uh, I just had an earlier model. Uh, but the problem is uh, a lot of the hours and a lot of the um, time lapses were on that board. And it was dead. So that's definitely a bummer. Um, we'll see. I'm actually going to be sending that board to Destinal because he said that he could still use it for development for open source stuff. So I'm going to ship it to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, did you get it by hand? <laughs> Yeah, I know you got those hand samples. Um, anyway, let's go back to this for a second. So I know this looks like a mess, uh, but here's essentially what all of this is. So I have two sets of servos and two sets of ELRS receivers. Um, they're both five channel receivers. Uh, however, this one is a little wonky. I'm not sure it was because of my crashes that I made or whatever i tried to reset this in various ways but what i ended up having to do with this one is run the two servos that go to the wings on a y connector uh not this one sorry this one this one is running on a y okay right this one's running on a y connector and that gives me an entire separate channel and what i wanted to do is technically i could run an analog um what's it called uh pov cam right from this, because uh, it'll, it'll be enough power. Uh, if it's not enough power, I put a jumper on the battery connector uh, to be able to do it anyway. So this, this one is definitely better uh, because it's just simpler and easier to use. Uh, this one, however, is a bit old, and obviously you could tell that it's been through something, but everything still functions. I'm not sure which one I want to use. I don't, I don't know if it matters, but this one definitely has a channel that, that's no longer working. Uh, and I tried to reset it up, but it doesn't work. So this one is less expandable, but works. But this one is expandable and works. So I'm thinking this is going to be the one. Uh, let me try to show you guys a little bit more info on this setup real quick. So here, I'm going to put this guy back in the box. <clears throat> All right, so... We have a speed controller. It's a 40 amp speed controller and it gets hooked up to the battery right here. Let's turn on the radio first, just in case. So it's ELRS and this little ELRS receiver, which is tiny uh, and they go much, much smaller even. Uh, we'll connect to that. So let's just connect the battery. We don't need that adapter for this one. All right, we had our little sparky sparks as per usual. All right, so here's the way that I have it set up, and I'm not sure if it's correct, because like I mentioned last time, uh, last time I built the plane, I had my wings, the ailerons, backwards, and that's why when I actually did have the airplane airborne, I got confused and lost in the controls because they were in reverse. Uh, so here's how I did it, um, and maybe for those aficionados in there who can help me out. So typically on drones, the way it works is I'm a pincher, but on drones, I have my, my throttle and then my yaw, right? This spins yaw wise. So we have power and spin on the left here. And then on the right, we have 
essentially turning left and right. A drone would would uh, rotate left and right and then pitch up and down. OK, so that that's how you fly quads. So on this plane, I have it set up, I think, in the same way, just because I'm so familiar with this. I don't want to get lost in the controls. That's my goal. So I have throttle, which I'll showcase in a sec. Left and right, this is going, I mean, uh, this would be, uh, what's it called, yaw. Uh, this is going to go on the tail. So it's a single servo. Uh, then going on the right uh, to go up and down, we have the, the rear, what's it called? I keep wanting to say rudder, the elevator. This is gonna be the elevator. It's another, you know, single, uh, single. And then when I go left and right on the right, which would typically rotate a drone, not rotate, but uh, what's this? What's this motion called? Um, barrel roll. <laughs> uh, that controls both of these servos at the same time. So me moving this to the right moves them both. And the way you can control which way these go is to remove this and spin it, or just put them put these guys uh, in opposite directions. So if one is up and one is down. Uh, when we go see, they'll go in opposite directions. And I can put them in the same orientation, undo this and rotate it, and they will go some other way. So I don't know if that's correct or not, but that's the way I have it. And then as far as the power goes, I gotta be careful with this, because like I said, the arm switch, there is no arm switch, because there's no flight controller. Uh, so it has to be done, uh, I have to do it in the remote itself, but right now, as soon as I Ow, see, it just caught me. As soon as you give it throttle, this thing is, this thing is cooking. So dangerous, I'm gonna unplug it. Uh, and like I said, I will set it up so that until this switch is armed, you can hear that beep. So until that is armed, this does nothing. Uh, and I had that set up before, just not on this radio. So yeah, so the electronics are working. I just have to think through how to do it. It should technically be really straightforward. Uh, it should be technically pretty straightforward, but I think I'm gonna set it up the same way as a drone. What do you guys think of that? Is that, you think that's a bad idea, a good idea? Is that correct? I don't know. <clears throat> ESP cam would be light. Yeah, it would. Yeah, I was also, so I also have a GoPro 9 Black, which I use for my quads, but I'm going to slowly switch over to uh, digital uh, on some of those quads. So I won't be using this anymore. And when I fly freestyle, I'm not really going to be doing cinematic stuff. So I was thinking of seeing if anybody wanted to trade the older, uh, what are those little, the little white cameras from Insta360? Like this is super capable, especially for a drone. Uh, it's still a ridiculous camera. Uh, and I know some people are trying to upgrade to something a little bit more closer to this, you know, with the back screen for an Insta Go. Insta Go 360, Insta 360 Go? Insta 360 Go 2, I think? I don't know. But I'm thinking <clears throat> maybe someone will want to swap because uh, I think that would be a pretty cool uh, thing to put on the plane since they're so light and easy to attach. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking maybe an FPV system would be kind of fun. I don't know. I have a bunch of like laying around like old, old analog style. Um, what's going on here? Force quit application. Why are we force quitting application? Guys, am I still streaming? I have an error on my screen. Did I lose you? Am I here? Uh, Guys, let me know in the chat if I still have you. I have a, uh, I have a uh, error on my screen that says I have to force OBS to close. Still here? Okay, I'm just gonna minimize that. Uh. Oh, I see what's going on. I, I run out of, <laughs> I run out of 64. Uh, megs of RAM, gigs of RAM, because I have uh, Final Cut open. I have um, uh, uh, lots of browsers, several browsers open. 
I have Fusion 360 open. <laughs> okay. I think we should be okay. Uh, let me quit some of that. It's still popping up, man. All right, hold on. Let me uh, let me close some of these extras. That's kind of funny. All right, let's close Final Cut. 